everyone! Welcome to today's live chat with Classic Alice's own Kate Hackett and Tony Noto. Thank you so much for joining us today, guys. It's great to have you here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, so here's a little uh, snippet of what Classic Alice is all about. So when college student Alice receives a bad grade on an essay, she partners with her friend Andrew to film a documentary about living her life according to classic literature. Uh, and so today we'll be talking to Kate, who is not only the creator and writer of the web series, but also stars in it along with Tony. Um, and another thing we wanted to share with you guys today is Classic Alice is also raising money for future episodes. Um, they have an Indiegogo crowdfunder that raised 7000 in the first day. Super impressive. Um, and uh, it was their, their goal for the Kickstarter for season one. And uh, today we're here to help raise more money and save Alice. Um, you can find the crowdfunder link at um, igg.me <laughs> slash at uh, save Alice. Um, and you can also follow their social media pages for updates um, um, at the Classic Alice. And if you look above the screen here under more details, you can see all their social media and follow them there for more exciting stuff. The Twitter is at the Classic Alice. Uh, not just oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's yeah, what I had. Okay. There were so cool. many so other at, classic Alice, classic Alice Twitter mm -hmm. handlers that we wanted to be real specific. Okay, so it's at the classic Alice. My apologies. Um, so to start, <laughs> to start, Kate, can you tell us a little bit more about the show and how you came up with the idea of Classic Alice? Um. So we, I was approached by another group of people who were trying to start a channel and they asked me to host um, like a book recommendation thing. Like if you liked Twilight, you'd like Wuthering Heights or whatever. Uh, and I said, no, that sounds boring um, because I am an actor, not a host and I would be a miserable host. And so yeah. um, I asked them what if, uh, what if we did like a thing that kind of bridges the gap between hosting and narrative, so it would be like a vlog kind of thing, and the guy was like, oh, like Lizzie Bennett. I was like, kind of. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> so um, we wrote it for them, and then they uh, wound up having other, oh, my hair's falling apart. Uh, they wound up having other things pop up, and uh, they were like, why don't you take it and do it? So I did. Awesome. So um, I had a question just to ask you guys. Um, this is a female positive series that shows women making interesting choices. Did you notice the lack of, you know, the positive female roles out there? And can you tell us more about that and kind of like the vehicle for starting it? I know that the stock answer is supposed to be yes, but no. I was just writing it for <laughs> me. And mm -hmm. that's kind of like, you know, my me and my friends and things that are important to me. So. If it happens to be like super female positive, that's awesome. And our whole production team is female. It's just, it didn't, awesome. it wasn't like a conscious choice to like fix the wrong in Hollywood. It was just like, that's just what happened. Chris and I are literally the only males on set. That's so <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a, it's a fair enough, it's a fair enough answer. It's, you do what you love, you know? Uh, now we have a ton of questions coming in from all different people. And uh, <laughs> Brandon has a little comment here. He says, Tony's hair is always so on point. What hair products do you use, or is that all the hairdresser magic at work there? <laughs> oh, my hair. Oh, I thought you said her hair. Um, no, hair. Oh, my, uh, what hair products do I use? And is it, oh, so I found, we got on set, and, um, uh, the makeup person was doing my makeup and then didn't touch my hair. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. And then I had to go back the second time, didn't touch my hair again. The third time I was like, did someone tell you not to mess with my hair? Because you haven't touched it once. And she's like, yes, I've had, I've got strict instructions not to touch your hair. And I was like, oh, okay. So I had to thank Kate for that. But, oh, um, <laughs> yeah, because um, do I, I put hairspray in it. And uh, I blow dry it sometimes, so yeah. It looks. I'm very particular about it. Like I'll, I'll just keep running my hands through he's, it until I'm happy. He can't stop staring at it right now. I don't, I don't even see. It's like tunnel vision. Yeah, I'm not here. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> um, 
So Madison has a question. She says, uh, what advice do you have for someone who wants to write and produce a web series? Um, <laughs> hire sound and hire camera. Uh, you can kind of cut corners in other places, but those are not the two to do it. Um, it depends kind of on, like, the trend now is to just, like, go make something. That's cool. But if you want mm -hmm. to do this professionally, you can't just go make something. You have to have everything kind of planned out. Right. Plan it. And get awesome well, actors. No, these guys yeah. are disposable. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of planning, as you just mentioned, Jason says, what is your writing process like and how do you break up writing each episode? Um, I don't, so I use Dan Harmon's story circle, which is you start at one point and your character wants something and there, there are, I think there's eight, uh, you travel points around the circle and the end of it winds up being like they get what they, they want or they don't, uh, having changed, and then they set out again. So each episode has that arc, it's just smaller, and then they fit within the larger arc of the book and the larger arc of the show. Um, and then when I, so I, I map it all out, and then I do like a timeline, and it's all color coordinated. It's very impressive. And oh, then wow. when I sit down to write it, I use uh, Scrivener, and I outline it in Scrivener, and then I start writing it, and then as I'm writing, I'll go back and add or change things, which is why there is so much foreshadowing in our show. Um, yeah. As I'm writing it, I'm like, oh, wait, we need that moment there. So if that, is that, that part feels disjointed <laughs> to me. But. When um, Kate and I were having, oh, no, having a conversation of, uh, I was like, Kate, what is it exactly that you do here? And what is your role on this show? She proceeded to show me a six foot long piece of paper that had everyone's timelines mapped out, color coded. It was uh, it was very intricate and impressive. So wow, that is extremely organized. And we have you know a lot of authors on this live chat, and some of them, well, I'd say the majority of them are seat of their pants writers. So it's that's that's amazing. You can't see that. <laughs> it stresses me out. Um, it, I mean, everybody's yeah. different. So seat of your pants if it pants if it works, it works. Um, I just like to make sure that I know exactly where everything's going so that I can add detail to play on things like, uh, I don't know, like, like Ewan's Mc, Mc, Duff, or Mc Duff, Macbeth arc was foreshadowed in his name. Um, mm -hmm. so like just stupid little details that if you're really watching really hard, you can catch, yeah. or if you, you watch again and watch really hard and be like, wait a minute. Um, yeah. they're all in there. Every single book that we do is somewhere on the set. So, um, mm -hmm. you can find little things. I like that. I like watching shows and finding things and being, I don't know. I like making my audience work for it. Mm -hmm. That was actually my next question. I, I wanted to just know a little bit more about some of the literary connections that I've noticed in the show. Mm -hmm. Um, so can you talk about a little bit about that for anyone who might not have seen it or just, you know, just some of the literary illusions. Oh man, there's a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, 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 I would like one specifically or just in general? Um, I'm not. Like a lot of our jokes are very literary. Her name is liter literary. Her name is uh, yep. Alice Rackham, which is the, the illustrator of Alice in Wonderland. His last name was Rackham. Yeah. And Lucy was called the. Yeah, Lucy was from the, her middle name is from the Woodsworth poems, the Lucy poems, mm -hmm. which were an inspiration for Villette, which is part, like, the themes of Villette are the themes we're dealing with on the larger arc, so, like, there, I don't know, there's a lot of stupid little clues mm -hmm. floating around. I didn't know that. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that. I'm glad you asked the question. <laughs> yeah. So it's basically chock full of... Literary. Oh yeah, it's literary like, if stuff. you're looking for something and you find a joke in there that you're like, did she mean to? I meant to. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I totally meant that. Awesome. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> um, Angela wants to know, where did your classic Alice logo come from and did you have any say in the creative design? Yeah, my, my best friend Nina, uh, her website is Nina E dot com. Uh, so Nina is an illustrator, and I was like, oh, neat. 
do you want to make a cartoon of me? And she said, no. And then I said, please. And she said, fine. No, she said, yes. Uh, so she made a cartoon of my face. And that's where it came from. Oh, wow. And, like, did I have any say in it? Yeah, absolutely. But, <laughs> but I was just like, just make the thing that you make, and that's it, the end. And she's like, what colors? I'm like, I don't know. Colors. <laughs> awesome. So I wanted a guy that? in there with filming her behind a camera, that. but it looks really creepy, so we cut the whole thing. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> um, so Julia wants to know, what are some other web series that you guys are watching, or what about TV shows? Anything that's inspiring you? Oh, man, TV. Um, <laughs> I, I love Breaking Bad. I know it's gone now, but uh, all the little winks that we throw in are totally like, I want to just be like Breaking Bad. So maybe everyone dies. I don't know. Um, Wait, what? <laughs> that's what happens. Like, people die. Uh, what else? I don't know. What else am I watching? Uh, Parks and Rec, uh, The Office, definitely for the next books, because that's kind of the mm -hmm. tone we push into. Um, uh, community. Yeah, that's a big one. great one. Awesome. Uh, I don't know. Pretty much anything that's on that's good. Yeah. We need we need more Downton Abbey jokes. <laughs> there are more Downton Abbey so jokes. So her and I you just discussed this. this the other day. No, don't tell the joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I gotta save it. I just I just been watching a lot of Downton Abbey and I just discovered New Girl, which is pretty great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Of course, Game of Thrones is the greatest TV yeah, show that's ever existed. Yeah, next season is just Game of Thrones. Like, yeah. the whole thing is Game of Thrones inspired. Uh -huh. oh, excellent. What about favorite no. books? Any um, current reads? I'm currently reading the Bill Nye Science Guide book about evolution. Mm. It's in my bag. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, that, that's you? not really. Um, I'm currently reading. It's, it's a book. Uh, it's called In the, uh, the Name of the Wind, and it's it's kind of Game of Thronesy. It's part of this like King Killer Chronicle series. There's three or four books, um, but I'm trying to think of the author's name right now, and I can't think of it. What is the name? I can never think. Of well, it's it's there's a lot of like magical elements. But do you and, ever find out the name of the wind? Well, the name of the it's very complicated because he calls upon the name of the wind as sort of like part of his magic, like, elements have names, and Jesus. it's a very good story, okay? His parents were murdered when he was a child. He's pretty, he's pretty much Batman in medieval times, mm -hmm. and I think it's a cool book. That's what I'm reading right now, so. Sounds legit. Sounds amazing. Um, so, <laughs> um, Kate, someone wants to know, Natasha wants to know, how did you come up with the character of Nathan? Um, Josh... Josh helped with that, but we kind of wanted this, like, uh, this was a no-brainer. We wanted the camera to move while he was sitting with me, and we wanted to get him on screen mm -hmm. more. So we needed someone behind the camera, and I thought, wouldn't it be hilarious if this undergraduate had an intern? Because that's so weird. So we gave him an intern. <laughs> now, um, Angela wants to know, why does Nathan never appear on camera? Because he's an uninvolved participant. He has right. a terribly he's scarred not. face. He's no. very, he's <laughs> very shy. I think that's he's a question allowed. that's left unanswered. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so how about Kara and Reagan? Can you uh, talk about them a little bit? They're two very different characters. Yeah, um, so Reagan is Alice's cousin. She's... Uh, of dog hair floating around. Um, so I don't know what Reagan's thing. She's like kind of party girl, um, a little bit more gregarious than Alice. Yeah. And then Kara has like, Kara's got it all figured out. She's way ahead of these two people. She's like, all right, guys, come on, just quit. Um, very kind of steady. They're both foils for Alice, so. I imagine Reagan as Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. Uh, 
Not even picturing. Well, when, I was hoping that we would cast her, but it didn't work out. Her hair is the same color. Like, I, well, I it thought it would make sense. Right. You guys are related. No, people I wouldn't be able to tell us apart. They'd be like, what? Well, I think, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, will Reagan be back in season two? I don't know. I don't know. Um, it kind of depends on actor schedules. Maybe. Ah, okay. Um, Mary wants to know, will Alice ever let Andrew pick a book? No. Oh. No. Interesting. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't like Andrew's answer. What, what is it? What is it? Because um, it, it has to be public domain. Right. Um, Count of Monte Cristo, which Ooh. actually I thought about doing. I was going to suggest yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I outlined that at one point, and I think it got scrapped. Why? I forget. <sighs> that sounds amazing. Thank you, Mary. We're doing Count of Monte Cristo. I think it's so long. Like, I want to put Alice in prison and then film her just like there for thirty was. I was like, years. How do I get here? How do I get to this place? <laughs> I love all of your answers. So today is amazing. <laughs> this is a fantastic. All right. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Do so you have a favorite moment from the show so far? If you could pick one. I like that fucking or sorry, <laughs> dress with pockets. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's so excited. <laughs> um, is it okay to curse? It's probably not okay to curse. I would avoid it. I was gonna say I wouldn't, but I just did. So. Um, <laughs> I'm in shock that I haven't yet on this, so you're, it's, that's the first one. You are the first one. That's amazing. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> uh, I one, think, I, two, two moments I can think of off the top of my head is one, um, the episode where Alice is dressing you and up to oh, look yeah, exactly like me. <laughs> that was a pretty fun day on set. Um, and actually, it was another day when we were all on set. It was the day, it was the episode where uh, Kara comes out to the camera. And um, I thought that was that was a really cool moment to um, watch the reaction from the fans and, and just kind of see that shock wave through the audience and, mm -hmm. and see the response was really neat. Awesome. So. Yeah, I liked that one a lot as well. Mm -hmm. But that, that uh, the... Pygmalion ball. Like, there's the end was so sweet. That was so nice and so pretty. Mm -hmm. That's really all I want. Yeah. <laughs> so Jason has an important question. He says, "What happens if you don't reach your goal? Will you still be able to make more of the series?" We hope. Uh, it's gonna. At this point, I mean, we've got like a twelve. So I don't know. Um, whatever. However much we have, we can make some, but we cannot mm -hmm. make what I've written at all. <laughs> So uh, we would have to completely truncate, and it wouldn't be a 24 episode arc because the uh, no. The answer is no, unless everyone here goes and donates fifty dollars yeah. each. Fifty? Yeah. How many people are here? Thirty-eight. Yeah, let's. Uh, do, I don't know if the math yeah, is on that, but that's what we need. There will be more than that after the chat. It'll it'll show the actual numbers, and there will be way nice. more. So yes, yeah, everybody. Head on over. <laughs> uh, yes. It's, it's just, it's not going to, it'll be like an episode or two. Like, it's not going to be very big, and it's not going to be very much, and we're not going to, like, we, it's just, we can't make it happen like we did this time, because we were calling in a lot of favors, and people are like, I don't want to do any more favors for you. So. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So yeah, everybody, check out the crowdfunder link, igg.me slash at slash save Alice. And <laughs> so are you guys working on any other projects right now? Mm -hmm. Any other stuff like brewing? Um, I I mean we go on auditions for things. Yeah. We do mm -hmm. we do um we do things with other web series people. Oh, oh yeah, there. I'm in social media. Yeah. I'm a jerk. She just called me today. <laughs> awesome. Uh, <laughs> we do some stuff with some other YouTubers and uh, every now and then, but 
I know at least for Kate, the focus has really been like she's really spearheading this whole yeah, I'm thing. Yeah, I'm tired. And I'm, I'm, I'm there helping her, but um, a lot of our energy is poured into this, so. So, but yes, the Game of Thrones casting director is calling me next week, uh-huh. and I'll be flying ah, to okay. Scotland to film there. Um, Kit Harrington and I are going to have a very great scene together. It's going to be uh, north of the wall, just myself ah, and John so boring. <laughs> No, it's not. Ah. <laughs> So, we have a, a Redheads-related question. Mackenzie huh. says, the Redheads are taking over the internet. And she said, between you and Tony, Paula Rhodes and Kyle Walters from New Peter and Wendy, and Ashley Clements and Daniel Vincent. Oh. Um, <laughs> do you see all that? It's a long question. Who do you yeah. think had the most gippable kiss? <laughs> uh, duh, us. <laughs> are we not are in there? there? Oh, yes. we are. Oh, there we are. Yeah. I don't actually, I don't know, because our kiss was like a panic attack kiss, and then you pulled away, so I guess. Yeah, I don't think we're going to win this one. Uh, uh, I don't know. What right. do you think? Uh, probably Ash. I mean. <laughs> Ash. Um, yeah, <laughs> Ashley and Daniel is pretty adorable. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I haven't no. seen, I haven't seen, me. I haven't seen a new Peter and Wendy kiss yet. I feel ashamed. I haven't seen it yet. Should I look it up right now? No. No. <laughs> you know what? You tell us later. I think our vote's us anyway. Even if it wasn't, like... Our, our vote's with us. Mm-hmm. We're betting on this okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good to me. So, Kate, can you describe Tony... <laughs> Kate, can you describe Tony in one word? Mm. Ego. Whoa! <laughs> That's completely oh. accurate. Okay, Tony, describe Kate in one word. Oh, no! Oh! <laughs> That's not fair! Uh, ooh. Ooh. Mmm. Mm. Stakes are high because of what you just called me. But I was kidding. Um, I'm gonna say Diva. Cool. Yeah. Okay. We just hate working with each other. I can, I can feel the love. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Gina has a question. Um, she says, this question is for Kate. What was the first thing you ever wrote outside of school assignments? Oh, God. I wrote a lot outside of school. Um, Do you love notes, Kate? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, re- I give myself homework. Uh, so, I don't... I, I was writing, like, you know, little word processor stories. I don't even know the answer to that anymore. I Yeah. I don't know how you can remember every single little thing. That's, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, I'm it's a total little. question. Yeah. Sorry, Gina. <laughs> That's all right. So, uh, social media, can you talk a little bit about just what you guys are doing and how it's helped the viewership and the fan base of the show? Um... This is a complicated question because uh, Kate has a lot of secret things going on, and Do I? Uh, I don't know if I'm at liberty to discuss them. But uh, Kate, uh, I, I mean, Kate has a team of people that kind of oh, manage wow. the all the characters' accounts and the Bailton accounts, right. and um, you, this when is you another say team. Do you mean Kate? Well, and we have. Uh, we, yeah, I mean, I've helped mapping them out, but doing the, like, day-to-day stuff. Oh, see, she's so secretive, I don't even know. Uh, but I know she's got a lot of them scheduled out. Uh, at least the the very important ones that have to do with the story, they're all, like, scheduled in, yeah. ready to yeah. go. And then we had uh, Dana, who worked on Sanderson. She's, she worked with us, um, and she helped cool. with those. Um, her biggest mistake so far is giving me the login yeah, and password to the Classic really Alice I it. <laughs> Twitter yeah, account. Eric. And um, I also have access to some other oh. accounts that she doesn't know of. But I, are it, evil. Not that I'm not that I'm purposely sabotaging it. I accidentally do it. Like I think I'm tweeting from my Twitter, but then I realize that I'm tweeting from Classic Alice, and then I have to go back and delete it, and then I get a text from Kate like, "What are you doing?" So. <laughs> um, 
So basically, social media has just hurt us because. Correct. Yeah. Um, I'm sure. I mean, it's a grassroots show, so that's kind of the only way to like. Yeah. Uh, well, how how is it done with the fans? I'm sure it's been amazing. Just you know, reaching out. The to interacting with them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mostly like trolling them. <laughs> 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 I love kind of watching them like, <laughs> and then just being severely disappointed. That's what makes me happy. Oh no! Hey, you can't fool everybody. This was one of those. The, the social media aspect of the show was one of those that really kicked into gear, and I got to watch it from an outside perspective, but. Like I said, when Kara came out, and then to watch sort of the ripple effect mm -hmm. through the transmedia elements was really impactful and powerful and really cool to uh, witness and sort of be a part of. So yeah. that's when I knew it was it was something. And that, then we photoshopped Tony's hair onto Brent Bailey's face. Yeah, <laughs> that was a terrible idea. I don't know if you know about this, but it was done. So there was a. Uh, it was a picture a release. It was a blooper. It was a blooper release because Brent uh, on set grabbed Kate's face and kissed her on one of the bloopers. I wasn't bloopers. expecting it. One of the outtakes. It was great. Uh, it was great. And then That's the most gippable kiss. The, the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, uh, our, graphic, uh, our graphic designer, uh, Becca, uh, took my head and put it on his body, but then did it so... She, you took, she just took his hair. Oh, she took my hair. And then, like, blurred him out. And so it looked like Tony was kissing me, even though the clothes were totally wrong. People weren't happy about it, but it was so well done. I didn't know that... It, I was wondering where they had gotten the picture from, because I didn't know that she had taken my hair and put it on Brent's face. And I was so That's confused funny. by it. And then when it never actually happens that Tony kisses me, people were like, what? And I went, oh, no, sorry. Too much. And thanks, to the, and thanks to the social media, we get to know those things pretty quickly when they're unhappy. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. But it got attention. It got attention. So that's, you know, yeah. all right. that matters. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see what else we have coming in here. Um, yes, Patrick Rothfuss. Thank you, Meg Rose. Who's Meg Rose? Oh. I don't, don't know. know I, Rose I just saw this down Canadian here. Down Where? Can I huh? respond? Yes. Yeah. She's yeah. What uh, you she wrote the author of. I'm not cool with you representing us without punctuation. Guys, look, <laughs> I'm not gonna here correct pronun pr whatever. pronunciation. <laughs> punctuation, <laughs> not pronunciation. There, <laughs> I feel like an exclamation point. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh man, I'm. Yeah. I don't know where to go next. Let's see. Me? Okay. <laughs> what? Why is this my fault? <laughs> All right. All right. Pulling it okay. in. So, so Meg Rose wants to know, how do you choose the books for the show? Do you use the plot and the characters to drive the book choice? Do you have a book in mind, a favorite book? Is it, you know? Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure it's not random. That's an excellent question. Um, this is a question I get all the time. How do I choose the books for the show? Do you choose the plot and characters? Okay. So there's no great answer for this. Um, yeah. Sometimes I have a book and I'm like, I really want to do this. Does it fit? And it does. Yeah. Sometimes I have a book and I'm like, oh, I really want to do this. Does it fit? And it doesn't. Um, sometimes, like, the our narrative, like, the characters are more important yeah. than the book. Uh, so if the book doesn't fit, I, I need to pull something else in yeah. or change order. Like, that happened uh, this last time. Um, I forget the original order. It was like... I don't even know what the real order is. It was Pygmalion, Butterfly. Those two were locked in first and second. Then, uh, then what came up? Macbeth. Then, so this is the real order. It was the one that you saw it was Pygmalion, Butterfly, Macbeth, Rip Van Winkle, uh, Wind in the Willows, and then Christmas Carol. But things were flip flopped. It was Pygmalion, Butterfly. Um, Rip Van Winkle, Macbeth, mm -hmm. uh, Wind in the Willows. So, like, Rip Van Winkle and Macbeth were flopped. Um, and I had to switch them because, narratively, it just didn't make sense for uh, us to go ghost bowling at that moment. So, yeah, things shuffle around. There's, it, 
Yeah, and, and she wanted to do uh, a Christmas story during August, and I was th- I was saying, Kate, hey, that's not. Why don't you just switch the first one, the last one? It would make perfect sense. And, and it was super weird because she like ran in and like ninja kissed him <laughs> in the first episode. It was a terrible. Uh, no my sense. first draft was an uh, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> so many surprise surprise kisses everywhere. It's amazing. Um, Mackenzie wow, has a question. Was... <laughs> yeah. Mackenzie wants to know, is there any chance for a classic Alice and new adventures of Peter and Wendy crossover? Um, I'd love to see that. No. <laughs> I don't know. We'd have to ask them, I think, because they're yeah. doing an actual book. We can kind of do whatever we want. It doesn't totally make sense, I think, for, like, if that book exists in our universe, it, it would be kind of weird, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah. I mean, I can guess on it. I, I don't know about I don't know the answer to a crossover that would be in the uni- in the universe. He's cool. But yeah. Princess Leia here <laughs> believes that uh, may, you know maybe out of world something could happen. Right. Like if, I mean, if they're playing a different character, mm-hmm. like we had all the Emma people playing yeah. not Emma people. Right. Mm-hmm. So cameos. Yeah. Now, if you. Yeah, Kyle Walters is a big fan of me. He loves me. So if he sees this... Kyle Walters ran away from me last night. <laughs> <laughs> I approached Kyle about a, a possible... Yeah, a pre- proposition, a preposition. And <laughs> Kyle was not feeling it. Yeah. And I said, that's cool, man. I'm going to go talk to James Brent Isaacs about it, and we may do it now. So he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. <laughs> I bet you he's watching. I bet he is right now. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to deal with that later. <laughs> so we are running out of time. It's already been 30 minutes, which is crazy. It flew by. We have one more question. If you were to describe the series to someone who had never heard of it, what would you say to them to get them to want to watch this? It's wishbones for grown-ups. Wishbone for grown-ups. <gasps> wishbone. Oh my god, I missed that show. I Can know, I right? <laughs> Story about Wishbone. We're out of time. We're out of time. You'll have to come to the hangout on Sunday. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I want to hear it, but I mean, it's a question. It's a really good story. Do you know it? I know it. it. Okay, so when I was, I don't know, seven, um, or maybe even younger, uh, Wishbone was was on, and I loved this show. I was only allowed to watch PBS, and this was like (laughs) my show. I loved it. Mm-hmm. So I, I, uh, oh, yay, we passed that many. Thank you, Aaron. Yay. Yay. Um, so, uh, so I, so I really wanted to be on Wishbone. My parents were like, yeah, that's cool first. You can't be that good. That's cool. And I was like, yeah, 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 whatever. But I really want to be on Wishbone. Yeah. So somehow through a lot of like, calling different offices. I don't know how I did it, but I managed to get the producer of Wishbone on the phone with me, and I was like, hey, I really love your show. Can I be on it? And she was like, what? How old are you? And I said, seven, or whatever. And uh, and she was like, can I talk to your mom? So I give her the phone, and my mother's like, what? And uh, they talk, and like, systems were go on this until my mom was like, Katie, you can't move to Texas to shoot Wishbone. <laughs> Like, but they sent me this huge package of like wishbone paraphernalia to and like a oh handwritten note no. and you know, all this stuff and I'm like, this close. She was almost wishbone famous. Uh, I don't know <laughs> how I got that phone number though. Classic no. childhood memories. <laughs> well that was an amazing ending. And I just wanna thank you guys again for joining us today. And guys, go and check out the crowdfunder uh, link, igg.me uh, forward slash uh, at forward slash save Alice. And once again, thank you so much for joining us, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, have a great one. Take care. Bye. Bye.